Welcome back to another video. Hope you guys have been liking these RTS videos. Uh, and we'll be continuing the series. Um, uh, this, this set of series will focus on combat and movement of RTS units. So with that, let's get started. Uh, I, I made a unit controller class here. Um, and I'm going to refactor, if you've been following us, um, we had just a player manager and a screen helper. And the base code for that is on GitHub. And a part five will be a branch on that thing. That will be in the description. Um, so we'll dive into the player manager. And right now, the player manager is doing a little bit too much. Um, uh, we want to have like a unit controller. So I made this unit controller class that the player manager will interact with. And each um, unit will have a controller. And then you can expand from this class, inherit it, and make it like a warrior controller, bowman, or if you're doing a sci fi, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so just from the get go, we know that the unit controller should um, handle its own movements. So I'm going to have, oh, probably want to do public void move unit. Uh, public void um, set selected and that will pass in a bool is selected move unit uh, that will just be a vector 3 and we'll just set that for now so let's go back to the player manager and let's just change a little bit about how our selected so instead of just having transforms we're just going to be unit controllers and that way we can just act upon the unit controllers themselves so we have our select units there'll probably be an error somewhere down here in our select unit function so instead of the unit which is the transform we can just do unit game object get component unit controller and now we're successfully storing those units um, and we don't need this anymore so in deselected units, we're going to just change all these methods to do selected units. I set selected true. Oh, actually, that's the deselected. So we'll do false and we'll copy that. And in the select unit, paste right here. Um, actually, there might be a problem with this. So we'll change this to unit and instead of the transform coming in we'll pass in the unit controller that way we don't have to uh, let me just grab this get rid of that and then we just add the unit so i will break a couple of these so we'll do we'll just do game object get component and then over here same thing this one might just need the transform Okay, cool. So now we're passing in the unit controller and adding the units correctly. Now we can go into the unit controller and paste that old code we had. This is all we need. And then is selected. And this is just the transform of whatever this is attached to. Transform. <laughs> For our move unit, uh, we're going to use Unity's nav mesh agents. So let's just make a class variable private nav mesh agent um, if you don't have if you don't see it it's under unity engine dot AI we'll just call that nav agent for now we'll simply just do nav agent destination equals test now I think we can test well let's test the moving as well while we're at it so if input get mouse button down and we want one for the right click then we'll just copy paste our existing code uh, the reason why I don't put this out into the update is that will run every single update but we it's okay to replicate code <coughs> code as um, while they're only acting on that thing so we'll go into here that should be the same instead we just want to compare it to the ground and if it is and we want to run a for each tab tab to get that so for each selectable object in our selected units so for each of these units we're going to call selectable object move unit and the destination is going to be the hit point of where we clicked 
You don't need this else dragging. And that's looking good. Okay, I think it's, well actually, let's just add a clause here. If selected units count, count is greater than zero. So actually do, right click shouldn't do anything, at least right now, if we don't have any selected units. So let's go into Unity, do that compiles. And we click. Oh, so we didn't add anything to our units. <laughs> So let's go ahead and add a nav mesh agent. We'll just set the default values. Click apply there. <coughs> you might want to change the speed and angular speed. Um, the unit docs are good for that. And we want to add a unit controller to the player unit. And click apply. Okay, now it should work. So we select this. Nothing seems to be happening. Super quick debug. I'm pretty sure we forgot a bool somewhere. Ah, in select unit, set selected is false. We want that to be true. Now we should be, we should have move and selection with a unit unit controller. Ah, looking good. Both of those still work. We right click, that still doesn't work. So most likely that's a problem with the nav agent. And I am sure that, yes. So we actually didn't public void start. We didn't actually set this nav mesh agent. So nav agent equals get get component nav mesh agent. Okay, now that should be working. Uh, the other way is if you set this to public and drag it in the inspector, I prefer to just set it here so that uh, we know it's initialized rather than like someone forgetting. So now we click, select like that's looking good. All right, and it's turning and rotating and everything. So now we can have some nice stuff. They're a little slow, um, but moving is working. So the next one we will have attacking against enemy units. So it should be relatively quickly to get this up. So we'll do else if, and we're just gonna check if there are on an enemy unit. So we don't have this tag. So we'll have to make this tag, but if they click an enemy unit, and this can be whatever you want, then we'll just copy paste here. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is set new target, rather than just like an attack, because there might be some logic inside the unit controller themselves that would wanna handle how it attacks. So we'll just send in the transform of what we hit, set new target. <coughs> so in here, uh, we'll have a private transform called current target and our method will simply just do public void set new target transform we'll take in an enemy and all we're going to do is current uh, current target equals enemy <laughs> so now we can go into our, we can make an update function and I'm sure you're well aware update calls every frame and so what we want to do is we'll check if current target does not equal null then we want to set the nav agent destination <coughs> to transforms position so if our transform is constantly moving, we'll constantly be uh, adjusting our position towards it. Probably good to just set current target equals to null, so if you want to move the unit, that works appropriately. And I think I see a bug. Um, we're setting our nav age destination to the transform of this object, which is not correct. So we want to do the current target's position. There we go. Now we can get into Unity and just for now, let's just quickly duplicate this guy. We'll call him enemy unit. Um, we'll set the tag to enemy unit. Add the tag if you don't have it. And to make it easier, let's just duplicate this real quick. Do enemy unit mat. And we'll just give him like a purple color or something. Uh, add that to the enemy unit. See wherever he is. Drag him to over here. Now I can test. So we should be able to move around and also follow 
this unit. So if we click, there we go. He's following it, however slow. He will keep following him and keep pushing. So uh, that is a problem with the stopping distance. So we should set that to, we'll just set it to two for now. Let's jump up the speed to like 10 and the angular speed to 500. Okay, now let's just test. Um, just to make sure he's not just ramming into the guy. Click, go right, <laughs> he'll turn and he will <laughs> not. Let's try to set the braking distance to 10, something high like that. Click apply. So they all have it. Okay, now he should stop a respectable distance for now. Click right and he slows down and stops. And <clears throat> we can get all these three guys, right click and we do it. That's looking good. We don't want enemy unit to be selected so let's handle that right now. So the reason the enemy was selected was because we're just grabbing all the box colliders so we're gonna need something a little bit different for that. Um, right now we could just unselect unit controller but that won't really help us in the future so let's just actually create a new script called player unit controller and we're going to add that to only our player units. Add that to our player unit and not the enemy unit. And we don't need to do anything for now. Uh, we're just going to go in here and in our for each for when we're dragging, instead of a box collider, we're going to get player unit controller. And then unit controller. In the future, you'll probably pass in the unit player unit controller, but to make it easy, that's what we're doing. So now the enemy won't get selected and we should be good to go. So we highlight and he's not getting highlighted. We press right, we're good. We can send our units everywhere and that's looking good. Thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you guys been liking these videos if not drop a comment what I can do better what you'd like to see in future I think in the next video we'll probably handle some combat um, maybe when you click this guy will get highlighted and there'll be some flashing for damage and things like that um, all that kind of cool stuff so see you in the next video